Hey everybody! Welcome back to Northern Line, please. Binding Mass Gantabrith. I'm less exhausted today. It's weird. I'm not used to getting that feeling of being like jet lagged when I didn't even leave the time zone, but I guess it's just, you know, you're on an airplane for like five hours. You just get to the place that you're going. If it's in the same time zone, you're like, I was just sitting down. When you drive for five hours, you got that in your head like, hey, if I fall asleep, I could kill somebody. So you stay alert. And I think I finally slept that off. 6BWMRQJE Guppy's Collar. And then also, little item you might know as Satanic Bible. So even though our stats are pretty bad, future growth is, uh, is definitely plausible on this one. Oh god, just ride! Probably shouldn't have done that. Um, yeah, even though our stats are pretty bad, in particular, you never like to start with less than one red heart. Sometimes you can actually start with a half red heart, I guess, if you had, like, lard or something. But, I mean, technically, like, no heart containers is what I'm referring to here. This is a pretty terrible situation to be in. And I think our damage and tears might be on the low side as well. But, as a trade-off, we get one of the best spacebar items in the game, especially from a defensive standpoint. And then we also get uh, a possible respawn, but more likely than not, it's just going to end up being a... Uh, one extra third guppy pickup for us, which is very, very useful, especially if we can get another one relatively early. I don't really want to go through the big rooms yet. I want to see if maybe we can get to the item room first and just pick up something that's a little bit, you know, more encouraging from a dealing damage to enemies and not getting our ass beat in standpoint here. Because right now, you know, I, I asked in the end of the last episode I recorded yesterday, I was like, Wah. Hey, I'm so good, I can win even if I have Epic Fetus. I'm so good, I can win even with Brimstone. When's the game gonna give me some uh, runs that are actually challenging? And this one, to start with, is not that challenging, man. It's really not. But it could get there in the future. As of right now, it's just a nice little lazy satanic Bible run. Once every few rooms, we get another black card. There's a lot of defensive upside. We even got some extra bombs to start with, and I may well end up taking advantage of those. Probably not to fight these enemies, but you never know. I would really like to get some TNT, aka dynamite, aka it could win the fight involved here. Do a little ring around the rosy there. Are you kidding me? You were like one pixel away probably. That's fine, that's fine. I'm not sweating it, that's fine. Apparently this is not the right way to go. But you never know if you don't go, and as many people will point out to you on the internet, you'll also never shine if you don't glow. I've noticed, you know, I'm trying to be a little bit more abreast of the memes these days. And All Star was a meme for a while, to the point where it got, like, extremely annoying even, as much as I appreciate the song. I actually loved All Star as a kid. I was of the age to be a big fan of All Star. But I was like, come on. Let's get over it. It's all sure it's not a great song. It's catchy. I get it, but it had like a two-year meme lifespan. That's more than most memes give to the world. We've moved on to "Smooth" by Rob Santana, featuring. Uh, did I say Rob Santana? We moved. Ah, yeah, damn it! I kind of do want to keep this, but that's okay. We've moved on to "Smooth" by uh, Carlos Santana, featuring Rob Thomas, and I think that song's a lot easier to make fun of, so I appreciate that. Leave Smash Mouth alone. Stop throwing bread at them, etc., etc. I wonder what's gonna be next, though. Crash Into Me by the Dave Matthews Band, it's of the era. It's contemporaneous with the other ones. I just wanted to say anus in a way that you guys wouldn't think was funny. Okay. Pop the Emperor card. I think it's absolutely worth it. Unfortunately, our, uh, our item room, oh, you fucker, basically ended up being complete trash. But do we get regular Steven? Or a higher chance of it? Oh my god! The dream has actually come true. Please god. Close item room. Wait, we've already been to the item room. I'm not even gonna go to the big room then. Let's just get the heck out of here. Quickly check for a second secret room. I gotta say, first floor I'm happy with the damage upgrade, but relatively displeased with uh, just about everything else that happened to me there. Let's move on. At least uh, from a consumable standpoint, we're good. And of course, you know, nothing's taken... Uh, Satanic Bible away from us, at least until we say that we want Satanic Bible taken away from us. Battery charge, absolutely, and also a Fool card. The Fool is really like where you want to be, card-wise. Because you're like, well, it's a teleport card, but it has no other purpose 
except to save you a little bit of damage out of like a curse room or something like that. So it, there's a huge incentive to just hold on to this for the potentiality of boss rush later on. For now, it doesn't really matter. That chest was really good. Uh, if we if we use it, fine. If we don't use it, well, then it doesn't matter, you know? It doesn't matter too much, at least. Yeah, that was a terrible dodge on my part. Probably can get a secret room and bomb out of this. I just gotta check. I gotta know. Yeah, I should've placed the bomb below. Gotta check. Gotta know. Should've placed that bomb below. I don't know. That's to the tune of uh, something I just made up, I guess. What goes up must come down. Well, now that we have unlimited bombs, I'm not really scared of this floor, actually. Um, not that I was afraid of it to begin with, but certainly the fact that we now can just use a bomb to blow up every single enemy is like an extreme positive. And our item room gave us Dry Baby, which people keep shouting at me because I shouted it. Yes, Dry Baby. It's fine. It's good. Sometimes it's a real lifesaver. But let's talk about wet baby. No, let's not talk about wet baby. Okay. First thing first. Monstro's gonna land on my bomb. He's gonna explode. He's gonna say, that's a spicy meatball. And then we're gonna move on to our deal with the devil. Which is not gonna be Krampus. And it's not gonna be garbage either. And we're gonna get an HP upgrade here. That makes it very easy to train. All right, so far so good. Literally none of that has come true. But the Hero Font is pretty dope. In some ways it is an HP upgrade. Technically correct, and that's the best kind of correct. Do you really trade three for Book of Belial or Betrayal? Yes, because it's precedent. But I'm just going to head down. I'm not pleased with this start so far, but I think it's starting to get there. And the fact that we do have a uh, Deal with the Devil precedent is very, very positive. But, you know, I'll, I'll be the first to tell you, it's not really where I saw this run going this early. Two and a half HP on the third floor. We've gotten Steven, Dry Baby. Pretty good. A, a little, you know, introspective Dry Baby. The trail, I don't think matters much at all. Our speed upgrade, or shot speed upgrade, doesn't matter much at all. I got a little closer than I'd like to get there, but that's okay as well. As long as we don't just get, you know, starved off at the source on this one. As long as, and I'm, I am talking about the source by Circuit City. You know, I my worst nightmare. Every night I wake up in a cold sweat having a dream. Oh, did I get, did I got locked into the source by Circuit City again? I thought, what the, I thought all those locations were gone. Okay, let's completely fuck with this run. Everything that I've said up to this point is now meaningless because every single floor is going to be different. And now we got a run going, boys. And I got to say, first run, very positive. Extremely positive. At least Satanic Bible sticks around. That gives us some insulation here. Not, you know, the pink fluffy kind. I just mean, like, if things go terribly wrong, at least we still have, um... At least we still have the ability to generate black hearts for ourselves. The real thing here, the, the real benefit is our... Excuse me? The real benefit is our, uh... Attack fly. Let's not die, though. I took a little bit more damage in there than I'm, you know, pleased to admit. The attack fly is really good. Mom's contact is quite good as well. And, um... Cupid's arrow can be good as well, but let's just not die, though, is what I was trying to get at. Like, if I could not die, that would be sweet. Um, we do have Pyro, so we can stand next to our bombs if we had any red hearts to work with, which we don't. Um, infamy is great. You know, we're only going to get Infamy for one floor. And, of course, when it's a good item, you'd rather have it for one floor. When it's a bad item, you'd rather... Uh, when it's a good item, you'd rather have it permanently. I mean, when it's a bad item, you're, you're okay with only having it for one floor. So is this... Good or is it bad? I don't really know because at the same time, like, who who cares? Because if you don't see a good item, then it can never be good. But a bad item at least could be good later. You know, oh no, I've gone cross-eyed again. Um, we should go to our shop because you never know if a battery charge could make all the difference here. Uh, not to mention, you know, mom's contact, attack fly. Beyond just a battery charge or a spirit heart making a lot of difference. And I think that there's options. It's something we should... Well, does it even matter? Maybe it doesn't matter at all. Maybe none of this fudging matters. I guess we'll just take Pandora's box and, you know, Super Vantage at least gives us Spirit Hearts. Those matter because they're semi-permanent. They'll stick around here. And we might be able to trade our Red Heart to a deal with the Devil now, which would also be very nice, especially if it gave us a Guppy item. All right, we're starting to build some permanency out of this, and I'm, I'm very happy with that. 
If we could have Satanic Bible and Guppy, no matter what our... If we could have Satanic Bible and Guppy, no matter what our Missing No rerolls were, that would be almost enough in and of itself to for me to be comfortable guaranteeing a win. But I would also like to see some cool synergies. Let's see. The Forsaken, especially when he's frozen, is not much of a challenge. No deal with the devil, but I guess a syringe is also semi-permanent. Let's head down to the next floor and pray that we don't get hit by Oblivion. No Oblivion, please, no Oblivion. Uh, number one. But our range is okay. Our speed is terrible, but number one can be bad. Our, our rate of fire is actually terrible for having number one as well. Um, but this has ended up being pretty okay, and I love getting HP upgrades with Missing No, because the HP sticks around, I think. I, I believe it does. So there should be no chance for us to get super low on HP on this floor, at least. We'll see what happens in the future. But for now, this is quite good. And of course, Glitter Bombs can be solid as well. Can be useless as they were in that situation, but can be solid as well. And as for like interstitial stuff, eh, it's a little weak right now. You know, Guardian Angel is not Guardian Angel, it's Seraphim. It's okay. Fart Baby, actually Seraphim's probably better than okay. Fart Baby is okay, at best. Um, Blood of the Martyr is overrated, but not terrible. Glitter Bombs actually came through super in the clutch for us there, and we're starting to get something going here. I know that's like the eighth time I've said we're starting to get something going here. We sincerely, now, are starting to at least have some forward momentum that, that looks like it might stick around. And anytime we can get a reroll into an item that also gives us a permanent benefit, or a semi-permanent benefit at least, like, you know, extra spirit hearts or something like that, that's the ticket. That's what we're looking for. Okay, no luck upgrades, that's fine. In the end, though, the thing with Missing No, that, that's a lot different. You might lump that and, you know, D100 and even D4 uh, into the same category. I don't think so. Missing No is a lot more like, um... A more dangerous version of just the dice room, in my opinion. Because all it takes is one poorly timed, incredibly shitty run to just fuck you to death, basically. Sorry for the graphic language, but... Like, if you have a great run, you might be thinking that everything's good. Then a floor from now, you're just like, actually... Soy milk keeps mascara. And you're like, okay, well, it looks like all of a sudden shit just got real. And, uh... We're lucky so far we've had relatively solid rerolls. In fact, if I'm being honest, most of the rerolls... Well, we've only had two, I guess. Three? I guess we've had three now. All of the rerolls have maybe been stronger than the, uh, the the run we started with. At least not markedly weaker. May or may not go to our shop. The shop, I think, doesn't matter that much, but it would be cool to get Chaos. Although... Something like Chaos Restock probably puts us closer to breakfasting ourselves than anything else. And we'll just save Satanic Bible for the off chance something goes terribly wrong, use our bombs on the boss fight, and hope for uh, hope for a deal with the devil that gives us some guppy items. I mean, I know I just keep saying it over and over here, but, you know, a deal with the devil that doesn't give us guppy items is fairly dangerous. Because the items will not stick around. Anything that works towards the transformation is fine, too, but we need Chaos to get any more of those, I think. Okay, take this, and I guess we'll take Headless Baby, which is still, you know, I mean, useless because we're just going to head down to the next floor, but might turn into something valuable. If we can afford it from an HP standpoint, I guess why not. Uh, and statistical downgrades are things we should be very concerned about, but still going strong, waiting on something, you know, more game breaky. Very, very fast right now. And you know what? I will say I see that we have Speedball, which explains why we're so fast. Um, or explains one of the reasons why we're so fast. We also have... Uh, I thought that might work. Uh, we also have uh, Cupid's Arrow, which is not Cupid's Arrow. It is Sagittarius, which gives us a speed upgrade, so that's another reason um, that we're as quick as we are right now. So we are getting a little closer to Beelzebub, and we are getting a little closer to... Um, to Spun, but we're not getting close to Guppy. Spun is a winner, no doubt about it. Guppy is the winner, though. The prototypical, you know, the prodigal son of transformations. Everything else is is secondary if we got a chance at that Guppy dream. Which we may not. Not every run, I think, has it in it, but... 
This one may. This one might. Be the run. We win tonight. I should really look into what our last uh, streak was, by the way, because we're getting close to it. I think it stopped before 30. So if we can get over 30, that's fine by me. And if we can just add like five to our streak every single time, does not bother me, you know? That means in a hundred years when I'm still playing this game, I'll be on like a thousand streak. And then people will finally respect me, not only as a goofster and a gaffster who brings the laughster, but also as a Binding of Isaac player. If there's a Binding of Isaac Hall of Fame, I want to go in as a player, you know, not as a builder. Mostly because I didn't build it, but... And the reason I didn't build it, it's like, it's not because I can't build it, it's because I heard this guy and he was like, if you build it, they will come. And I was like, whoa, that sounds like a lot of commitment. So I was like, if you play it, they'll, they'll stick around for a while. Okay, that sounds better, you know. Sweetie, do you want to join the Columbia Record Club? Whoa, baby! That's, I can't handle that kind of commitment. So we broke up, I never saw her again, and that's just the way things go. In Albuquerque, you know Albuquerque, Weird Al Yankee, of course you know this, come on, come on though. Yeah, exactly what I was looking for actually, Guppy's Head. So Guppy's Head takes us two thirds of the way there, and all of a sudden, renewed hope. Maybe we'll just sing another Weird Al Yankovic song before we walk into the boss fight. We'll get a deal with the devil, and then we'll get another Guppy item. Maybe he's our Guppy good luck charm. Now, do you take Satanic Bible, or do you take Guppy's head? This is where I reveal my innate biases. If I was a man who was confident that Ray Kurzweil would create infinite human life and, you know, merge my brain into a fucking cyborg, then I would be all over Satanic Bible. Who cares if this run takes, in, you know, a thousand years, even? I'm gonna live for infinity, so it doesn't matter. But I'm probably not gonna live for infinity. I would love to. I have no qualms about that at this point. You know, we'll deal with those over the course of infinity if I have an emotional problem with it or something. Um, but I, I really, as a mortal man, I value damage too much. I really do. I, I have to seed that damage is more important to me. I was gonna say, might have the mom transformation now. So, it's not a great transformation, might not even be a good transformation, but it's a fucking start, okay? Get off my back. We're gonna keep Perthro, could be very good on a deal with the devil. Right now, by the way, uh, Guppy's head, not very good for us. But it can take us there in the future. It can also, give me the people and free my soul, I wanna get lost in the rocket. Okay, that's, I don't, you get four and a half seconds. Safe from international property laws. Intellectual international property laws. Please, Leech, I really need you to be less like Robin Leech, host of Lifestyles of the Rich and Famous, and more like Brian Leech, famed defenseman for the New York Rangers. Be extremely positive. I want you to have a Hall of Fame worthy career and then glory hunt at the end of it with the Toronto Maple Leafs. Who possibly in the 0405 lockout lost their best chance of winning a Stanley Cup? No hard feelings. Though. I mean, I'm not a I'm not a Leafs fan either way. I'm not a Leafs hater. You know, it's just, mostly I just don't care. You know, for you, the day that Daryl Sittler scored seven points in the same game was the greatest day of your life. For me, it was a Tuesday. Was it actually a Tuesday though? I have to use Wikipedia to find out. Curse of the Maze. We are very slow, and our Ludo tier is even slower. And we have Isaac's Heart, but it's hidden by... No, it's not hidden at all. Alright, well this is exceptionally bad. The damage is amazing. The shot speed is, is heinous. It's so bad. I don't... I'm being honest with you, I don't know if I've ever seen a shot speed this bad. Luckily our damage is great, but I worry that we're not going to be able to hit enemies. I, I almost, and you're gonna hate me for saying it, I almost wanna go straight to the boss fight. Just because I worry that if I don't get through with this floor as soon as possible, I'll be fucked. And I, I actually am going to do that, and it's not for speed running purposes. It's just because I have Isaac's heart, and I'm frightened about this world that I live in, and this permutation that's been created. One of the strangest, oh my god, and Curse of the Tower. 
With sad bombs, thankfully. One of the strangest permutations I've ever seen. I think I was very right to get out of there as soon as possible. Not very white. That's a different person. I was very white. The person who spins the letters on uh, the Canadian version of Wheel of Fortune. What do we call it here? We Wheel of Fortune. We Whale of Fortune. W H E H L. Whale of Fortune. Uh, nothing here is worth taking. And I don't think it's worth using per throw on either. Head down to the next floor and be thankful that we got rid of a lot of high damage items, yes, but also we got rid of a lot of, uh... A lot of shit. And I really appreciate that. Like, we took Isaac's Heart out of the rotation. We took, uh... Strange Attractor out of the rotation. Uh, shit. We got Lusty Blood, Cricket's Head, Fire Mind. Fire Mind, obviously, a bit of a divisive item. But Lusty Blood is amazing. We can fly now because of our transformation. That's not going to change. Uh, Cricket's body is a lovely item when it's not hurting us. This could be spun right here. But it's only hurting us because of Fire Mine. It's not hurting us because it wants to. We'll take that. And at this point, you know, this is the kind of run that... Or this is the kind of roll that on a missing no run fucks with you. Because you're like, I'm doing great. We may not actually be doing great, though. I mean, we're doing great right now, but, you know, it's a great metaphor for life. Could all go away and, well, it's just a little bit needlessly macabre, I suppose, but, um... What's your favorite rap song that uses the word macabre, by the way? For me, I think it's probably Express Yourself by N.W.A. It's so macabre, but you know we need this. And the knowledge is growing just like a fetus. That is spun right there, right? Dude, I'm telling you, the singing game works. All right. Everything you know is wrong. Up is down, black is white, and short is long. And if you... Okay, so that's Guppy. That's our Guppy. Oh, it's not Guppy. It is growth hormones, though. Now that we got Spun and the ability to fly, that, you know, polishes up a lot of holes in our run. Oh, God. Is it Soy Milk Ipecac? 18 bombs, but Soy Milk Ipecac. Take that, rewind it back. I don't want to be the guy with the Milk Ipecac. We do have Dark Bomb here, so I, I do like that, obviously. But I'm, I'm really just... Oh, God. Trying to let... Um, trying to let the flies do as much damage as possible and the bombs and really survive this. Now, the good news is, if we survive this... Yeah, we can be, we can be hurt by bombs for sure. If we survive this, I don't think there's too many more shitty items left in the rotation. Beautiful. Um... And our flies are doing a ton of damage. No dispute in that. Ah! However, um, this this floor might be a little touchy. Do you go fight Hush? I mean, I don't even know what our health is. So I think we'd probably say enough zaniness for this run. Maybe save Hush for another day. Then again, we do have 34 cents and quite a lot of keys. But if we... Uh, it's just not plausible. Like, if we get fucked, we're in a real bad spot. But who knows? Maybe something will change my mind here. I'm I'm skeptical of it, but it is possible. Ooh, found the secret room, and the secret room is going to give us access over here. Might as well try it out. Ooh, yeah. Cricket's head would be quite nice. Not Cricket's head. And now I'm like, why the hell was I even in here? <laughs> There's no reason for us to be in here. We're going to fight three bosses? Is nonsensical. Look at how many fucking bombs we put on the screen. This is actually a, a horrible idea. Thank you, Dark Bomb. I'll be the first to tell you, our damage output is quite good. Especially when a Holy Light shot actually lands and is first a bomb, but then also Holy Light. Holy crap, okay. Slow your roll. No more damage. Dark Bomb, this is for you. Get the fuck out of here. That was a terrible decision. Uh, play this guy now. Everything we know is wrong. Give me Guppy's tail so we'll be strong. Okay, that's no good. I don't, th I don't think it does anything for us. So what are we doing now? We're placing bombs, baby. Okay, we're finding secret rooms. Dude, you couldn't just give me, like, one attack fly or something here to make my life ten times easier? 
It had to be this. Per throw, Hanged Man. Hanged Man doesn't do much for us. Yeah, 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 yeah. 22 bombs. That's okay, 22 bombs. Ooh, that's Spirit Heart. Choice pickup. Gonna have to do a little of that. Gonna do a little of that. That's fine. That's fine. Am I really gonna kill this guy? Dropping, uh, you know, 15 extra bombs in here? I mean, that's the that's the plan, Stan. That's the plan. This is what I meant when I said, you know, a missing no, it can all come crashing down. For example. As long as we're losing black hearts, I'm not that mad about it, though. Because I know that we have at least a few red hearts. Thanks to, uh... Thanks to our body reroll, right? So as long as we're losing black hearts, we should be roughly fine. We do also have Nod Leaf. It really comes down to, do you want to let... Uh... Eve's dead bird do all the damage for you? Well, you just sip on some delicious sparkling water. So far, this seems to be a decent plan, especially if an enemy chooses to run into us. Hey, we even got a black heart out of it. Yo, Eve's bird, though. There we go. Okay, and I'm thinking we... I know we got hit there. I think we should just go stand in the dead center. And then Mom's knife should totally fuck with it. There we go. That's the good stuff right there. We should have done that way earlier. Saved ourselves the hassle. Not worth it in the least. Should have re-rolled that, but that's okay. We've always got the chest, hopefully. Runs can't get much worse, or rolls can't get much worse. This run has been fine. Curse of the Blind, but at least our HP exists. This seems like, not good, but not terrible. Probably. Uh, I'm also, speaking of probably, probably not going to go to the curse room. Because I'm a little concerned about our HP. And we're definitely just going to stand on top of anything that we can stand on to make ourselves as safe as possible. All I ask is for a at least a 6 out of 10 chest roll. That's it. It doesn't have to be, you know, Epic Fetus and Brimstone Sad Bombs. Just a 6 out of 10 chest roll is fine by me. I know, aim, aim for the clouds, right? But Or aim for the sky, even if you miss, you'll land on a sunbeam somewhere, but... I don't, you know, Jesus doesn't want me for a sunbeam. I don't even want myself for a sunbeam. I just want to get through this Isaac fight without getting hit. I know I'm leaving keys on the ground. It probably frustrates you. It probably makes you want the, uh, the game to beat me. We're just going to have to put that aside and persevere. Now, Tech 2 is not ideal, but as compared to the last run, like... I'm as happy as a clam and shit. What? Cursed Eye? Of all items to not know that I had and then immediately look to the side of the screen and be like, Oh yeah, Cursed Eye, there it is. But you know what? I just realized we have an attack fly as well. So rooms that are not Isaac are going to be a lot easier now. With that revelation intact. Against Isaac, it's a little trickier to use. Oh, unlimited bombs is so good, though. You know what? Wiggle me. Yeah, that's weird. That's weird, all right. Okay, unlimited bombs. And the bombs make more bombs. And the ba ba bomb the ba bomb the bomber in. So we are going to use these unlimited bombs. And I think I'm just not going to shoot. And instead, I'm going to focus on getting those bombs in there. It's trickier than you might expect. You know, there's a very limited timing window that actually works for this. Left myself extraordinarily trapped in there. I'm going to say a big thank you to Halo of Flies for saving my butt there. Really thought that would have hit the Angel Fetus. That's okay. That's okay. We just need to get through Angel Fetus City. And once we're through that, it's smooth sailing down to four brand new items. Yeah, okay, there we go. Perfect. 
ended up not being perfect. He, the Angel Venus is all unkillable, man. Run, 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 run! Okay, go for it. Now we can hit him where it hurts. Sort of. I really do not wish to teleport out of here. Are we still better off using the fucking bombs than using our own tears? It's sad. It's sad and embarrassing is what it is. But one bomb accelerates this quite a lot. We really had a, a good, pretty f freaking front-loaded run as far as... Uh, oh, God, that was close. Pretty front-loaded run as far as uh, good missing no rolls was concerned. Like, it got a lot harder towards the end of this. I don't know if there's too much I could have done short of playing better on the last floor to keep some spirit hearts alive. This one's been a little, little tricky from the get-go, man. Okay, down to the next floor. We can control some of our own destiny down here. Seraphim transformation. Mulligan. Not mulligan. Yes, mulligan. This seems like good damage. Not good. Not good. Not good. Not good. Well, let's see maybe where we're going. We already can see where we're going. Uh, the Bible, take this, take this, and then we're going to Perthrow everything. Do you want to Perthrow Guppy's... No. They, what's the point? Keep Guppy's head. It's the best of these. Then Perthrow the other ones. We get Rainbow Baby, Fat Odd Mushroom, which did give us Fungi for another HP upgrade on top of it. D12, there's no rocks down here. And then Book of Shadows for Invincibility is pretty solid. Um, I don't know. I'd, I'd give us like a, a mild thumbs up for this. Our damage on the on the reroll seems quite good, and of course Epiphora is going to give us you know a much greater rate of fire the longer we shoot in the same direction. I don't know how I feel about Tractor Beam. I'm largely kind of neutral on it, I think. But the Mulligan is hugely valuable. So, I mean, I, in the end, it looks like we're going to pull a win out of this. So another one that we probably uh, skated by just like on the skin of our teeth. But I'll take it, man. It looked for a while there like uh, missing no might be the bearer of bad news, but. Instead, the bearer of bad news is just Billy Bob Thornton's 2005 film, you know, remaking the 1974 Walter Matthau classic, Bad News Bears. Is that not what the expression is? The bearer of bad news? Previously, you know, in Norway in the Middle Ages, whenever they had to give bad news to a king, they would just have a bear, and then they would write the message on a, you know, etched on a piece of wood around the bear's neck, and then the, the king, who was actually like a jarl, you know, as was the fashion, would be like, well, this bad news sucks, but at least the cute-ass bear delivered it. I can't be mad, but invade the English. That's the way our history class taught it, at least. King Ivar the Boneless was like, how can you be mad at this bad news just because the bear's delivering it? It's like the Billy Bob Thornton film of the same name. Oh, uh, sir, actually, that's a remake. Originally, Walter Matthau. What, excuse me? You want to know why they call me the Boneless? But actually, they call him the Boneless because the rumor is that he never consummated his marriage with his wife at the time. Savage. Remembered through history for his erectile dysfunction. Anyway, this one goes out to you, King Ivar. It happens to lots of guys. Probably. Thanks for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, click the like button. Helps out a great deal. Of course, subscribe if you want to see more in the future. For now, thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.